Football is truly a global game, one of the world's most watched and played sports. A nation's passion for the beautiful game can put it on the map. And at least one country is hoping to get some of that good PR that's often associated with football. And no, I'm not talking about Brazil. Did Saudi Arabia's sovereign wealth fund have made a $390 million offer to buy Newcastle from the British businessman Mike Ashley. Uh, the Premier League has spent months considering piracy and human rights concerns around the bid. So why would a Saudi sovereign wealth fund that invests in strategic assets like energy and government bonds want to buy an English football club? Here's why. There's a word for that, sports washing where corrupt regimes try to improve their reputations by injecting themselves into the world of sport. Since the public investment fund led by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman put in a bid to take over Newcastle United, various media outlets and rights groups have slammed it as sports washing. In other words, MBS wanting to use the glamour and global brand power of the English Premier League to whitewash Saudi Arabia's long list of rights violations and use his country's vast oil wealth to do so, I would like to emphasize that it is a very, very long list. To name a few, MBS is the architect of the war in Yemen, where more than 100,000 people have been killed since 2015. According to multiple reports, Saudi Arabia's aerial attacks have repeatedly targeted residential areas with more than 12,000 civilians killed. A further 85,000 people have died of starvation and millions are at the risk of famine. The United Nations has said Saudi actions in Yemen bear the hallmarks of war crimes. And most recently, MBS's involvement in the murder of a journalist. Turkish authorities have named eight of the 15 Saudi nationals who are suspected of being part of a team that arrived in Istanbul on the same day that a Saudi journalist, Jamal Khashoggi, entered the country's consulate. Khashoggi has not been seen since that moment on October the 2nd. Leading the investigation as Turkey's chief prosecutor, this is suspected to have been a pre-planned murder of a man who was once an advisor to the Saudi royal family. Jamal Khashoggi's fiancé has called on the Premier League to block the takeover, asking how it can allow the club to be controlled by someone accused of murder. If the deal had gone through, the Saudis would have not been the first wealthy Gulf state with a patchy human rights record to own a Premier League football club. Abu Dhabi's ownership of Manchester City, which won the Premier League in two of the last three seasons, has also drawn criticism. Like the Saudis, the UAE has been criticized for silencing dissent and for its involvement in the war in Yemen. Some maintain that Manchester City's league success is all thanks to the money that came with the UAE owners. Saudi Arabia's failed bid for Newcastle was disappointing for many fans who had hoped the Magpies could return to their glory days of the mid-90s. I guess for some sports fans, winning can come at any cost, and it's very possible that Newcastle United would have regained that success if millions of oil dollars had poured in. But as a sport, football has always promoted peace, and Mohammed bin Salman's involvement would definitely have tarnished the shine on the Premier League trophy. Sure, the club would have bought the most expensive talent and probably won some titles, something fans have been longing for since the 1955 FA Cup. But it would have been a victory bought with money that had nothing to do with good sportsmanship and more to do with rebranding the image of a tainted leader.